Welcome everyone to our Monday Thursday time of worship here at Mount Calvary in Lake Arrowhead. Uh, at this service, we're remembering the last night of Jesus' life, where he gathered with his disciples to have the Passover. Then he washed his disciples' feet. He instituted the first communion. He goes to the Garden of Gethsemane and he prays. He's betrayed by Judas with a kiss. He's arrested, and then the events unfold leading up to his death. The word mande is a Latin word that means commandment and reminds us of Jesus' great commandment in John chapter 13. A new commandment I give you, you should love one another. We pray that the service will remind you that you are loved by God and to live a life of love of service to others. Let us pray. Lord God, we'd ask that you meet us here this night, not entertain us, but show us once again what it was like to be with you on that last night of your life. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, with love, and with care for others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. of the world you step down into darkness open my eyes let me see beauty that made this heart adore you hope for a life spent with you here I am to worship Tracy here to talk to you about Maundy Thursday. And you might be asking yourself, what is Maundy Thursday? A lot of kids think I'm saying Monday Thursday, but I'm not. Maundy is actually a special word that means commandment. And on Maundy Thursday, Jesus said, a new commandment I give to you, that you should love one another. And he showed us what that meant by getting down and washing his disciples' dirty feet. And he said, that's how you should love and care for each other. So I have a real simple idea you can do right now while you're at home with your families that will remind you of Jesus' new commandment. And it is a love one another jar. So this is a jar that I made. Let's see if I can get it close to the camera. Um, 
You can make it with anything you have around the house. Uh, paint an old Pringles can, a basket, a bowl. I found an, an old canning jar and I put some stickers on it and a ribbon. And what I want you to do is to get together with your family and think of things you can do to serve each other. Because right now, the one another we have to love is our family. That's who we're with. So get together and make a list of things, then cut it up in strips, put it in the jar. And then you can pull out ideas for things to do to love one another and to follow Jesus. And so I'm going to pull one out. But what do you know? This one just happens to be on the top. It says, give mom a hand massage with some fancy lotion. I bet that your moms are working extra hard right now to keep the house clean, give you guys, keep you guys all fed, and keep everybody happy and entertained. And they would really love it if you serve them it, by giving them a nice little hand massage. There's all sorts of other ideas in here, and every family will come up with different ones. But the idea is that we are trying to follow Jesus' new commandment. And Monday Thursday reminds us of that. This is my commandment that you love one another, that your joy may be found. This is my commandment that you love one another, that your joy may be found. That your joy may That you love one another, that your joy may be full. On that first Monday, Thursday, Jesus did something shocking. As we read, he dresses up like a servant, and then he goes around and washes all the disciples' feet. And I'd like to try something. Some of you won't do this, but a few of you will. And that is take off your shoe right now. Just one shoe, one foot. Uh, have it out there in the air. I'll, I'll wait a minute while you do that. I know some of you uh, are embarrassed at other people seeing your feet. But imagine if Jesus was there with you right now. And he comes, he has you take off your shoes and your socks. And then imagine that Jesus coming to you and looking up at you as he is before you. And then feel the water being poured over your feet. It's kind of refreshing, but kind of weird. And then feeling the hand of Jesus as he slowly rubs the dirt off your feet. And then takes out his towel and dries your feet. Mm -hmm. uh, Jesus does this to show that we are to love and care for each other. That we are here to wash each other's feet. Listen to the words of Jesus once again. Do you understand what I've done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should wash one another's feet. I have set for you an example that you should do as I have done for you. What an amazing message Christ gives to us on Monday, Thursday. sin, who knew no sin, that we might become his righteousness. He humbled himself and carried the cross, love so amazing, love so Messiah, name above all names, blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, the rescue for sinners, the ransom from hell. Messiah, Lord of all, His body the bread, His blood the wine, 
broken and poured out all for love. The whole earth trembled and the veil was torn. Love so amazing. Love so amazing. Jesus Messiah, name above all names, blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, the rescue for sinners, the ransom from Messiah, Lord of all, all our hope is in you, all our hope is in you, all the glory to you. Jesus Messiah, name above all names, blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, the rescue for sinners, the ransom from heaven. Jesus Messiah, Lord of all. Given tonight's message is Pastor Earl Eide. He's a retired pastor who's blessed Mount Calvary for many, many years. I hope you enjoy his thoughts on Monday, Thursday. This is Earl Eide from Mount Calvary Lutheran Church bringing you the Monday Thursday message concerning the Passover and the Passion of Holy Week. This is the life, grace to you and peace, and I would add life and hope and love be with you and all of your loved ones now near and far this Easter season 2020. Our God and Father, the creator of us all, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. This is the life, and what a life and what a year has it has been. A year that we will not soon forget. From 1952 to 1988, there was a long-running religious series on television called This is the Life. This program was produced by the Missouri Lutheran Church and featured the solving of contemporary life problems from a Christian perspective. We could use a similar TV program today as we shelter in place out of fear of a deadly virus. Today is Monday, Thursday, 2020, and we are gathering in place remembering the Passover and the events of Holy Week. I want us to go back in history several thousand years, uh, about 3,000 years, to when the Israelites were sheltering in place in Egypt. They were initially there because of a famine in the land, but their stay turned into sheltering in place as slaves of the Egyptians. But they were not forgotten by their God, and neither are we in our time of need. God, through his servant Moses, delivered his people, and the Passover was key to that deliverance. Now I want to fast forward to about 2,000 years ago, when Jesus sheltered in place in the upper room with his disciples for their last supper together. 
as they highlighted and as they honored the event of the Passover. The disciples were living in a difficult time also. The Israelites were under military rule and occupation, and Jesus would soon be betrayed, arrested, tried, and crucified. The disciples' daily and constant companion, their spiritual leader, their personal savior and friend, would soon be removed from their lives abruptly and traumatically. While sheltering in place in the upper room, Jesus announced the coming betrayal by his disciple Judas. And against some objection, Jesus would soon be physically washing the disciples' feet, demonstrating what servanthood is all about. They shared the Passover together, and it took on new meaning for the disciples and for us when Jesus said in Matthew 26, verses 26 through 28, Jesus took bread and he blessed it and he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he could, took the cup when he had given thanks. He gave it to them saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. The blood of the covenant referring back to the exodus from Egypt. This is the life, and we are reassured today that we have life now and forever through the life of our Creator, our Savior, who is one with God, God's, son, God's own Son. The one who said, I am who I am, meaning that he was the very source of life itself and of all living. But back to Monday, Thursday, and the meaning for us in this is the life. So here is Jesus in the upper room on the eve of his betrayal, when some of his followers would soon leave him alone in his hour of greatest need and pain. Jesus is an innocent, soon to be killed. And yet here he is breaking the bread and drinking the cup eating with them, blessing them, washing their feet, a very personal gesture of servanthood, showing them his love and grace and compassion in a time when we might have better understood his wrath and his anger. The word Monday for Monday, Thursday comes from the Latin word mandatum, meaning mandate or commandment. We are talking about the night that Jesus told his disciples exactly what he would be expecting of them after they left the upper room. If there is, if this was anybody else's story, uh, they would be saying, avenge my death, or don't let them get away with it. Strike back, get even, get in the first blow. This is war. But this isn't just any other story. This is the story that turns everything upside down. Here we have a mandatory thing, a mandatory word from Jesus, where he is mandating us, telling us and his followers to do in the Gospel of John's Holy Week, the narrative found in verse, verses 34 through 35 of the 13th chapter. Jesus says, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. And by this all men will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. This is the life, our life, 2020. And as we shelter in place on this Monday, Thursday, we remember that Jesus Christ, the giver, the author of life, 
love and grace gives us the command this day and all of the days that we have to love one another even as he has loved us. And so tonight I say to you, Amen, Amen. Go in peace and love one another. Amen. On this night, I'm going to pray a little bit differently than what we're used to when we're in our, our church building that the Lord has, has given to us to come together and meet in the same place under one roof. I'm not able to do that right now. So what I want to do is, is kneel and pray together. If you wish to kneel, you may do that. You may stand, sit, whatever you're most comfortable with. But I hope we can all humble ourselves before the Lord, ask for Him to work a miracle in this land, to call many people to, be, to belong to Him, to put their faith in Him and everything that He has done for us so that we could be accepted in His sight. Your love is steadfast. Your strength never fails, Lord. So in this time of danger and trouble, be to us a sure guardian and rock of defense. Guide the leaders of our nation, Lord, with your wisdom. Give them your wisdom, knowledge, understanding, ways to, to uh, obtain relief from this disease, Lord. Comfort those in distress. Grant us courage and hope to look to the future, Lord. We can face tomorrow because you live, Lord. We know that to be true. Lord, we ask you to help us at this time of difficulty. And as you taught us to pray, we pray you would give us our daily bread, Lord, and give us those basic needs that we have every day. You've promised that you will never leave us nor forsake us. We put our hope and our trust in you as we pray together the prayer that you taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The stripping of the altar is an old, old tradition in the church to show how Jesus is being stripped of all of the things of God and of man as he prepares to become the sacrifice. Psalm 22 is a psalm that kind of describes what Jesus would be going through the next day. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer. And by night, but I find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you our fathers trusted. They trusted and you delivered them. To you they cried and were rescued. In you they trusted and were put to shame. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by mankind, despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They make mouths at me. They wag their heads. He trusts in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, for he delights in him. 
I am poured out like water. All my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My strength is dried up like a pot shard, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs encompass me. A company of evildoers encircle me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them, and for my clothes they cast lots. For he has not despised or abhorred the afflictions of the afflicted, and he has not hidden his face from him, but has heard when he cried to him. Psalm 22. Merciful Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. Join us on Friday at four o'clock for our Good Friday time of worship.